So what you see before you on the laptop and the tablet is Windows 8. What you see on the little smartphone there is Windows Phone 7. And what you see over here on the Xbox is their Windows um, Xbox experience, essentially. But doesn't this all look a lot alike? Microsoft is planning for a unified user experience excuse me, user experience um, across its line. However, um, let's just focus today on the tablet and the desktop incarnations of Windows, which would be Windows 8. This is a complete 100% departure from anything Microsoft has done in the past. Because if you're using Windows to watch this, take a look around, you'll see your start button, your taskbar, and all that good stuff. You minimize the desktop, you'll see your icons there. This is the user interface that you're running right now that has been in use since 1995. Okay? So it's been a long time. Yes, they've done some refreshing but they've not done a total redesign. It's like a car manufacturer adding, basically refreshing a single model, but never completely changing it. Well, they've finally done a complete overhaul of the user interface, which is apparently something that has, um, that's, um, that Apple has done over a decade ago with Mac OS going from 9 to 10. Um, As far as the user interface, I like it. I like it. It's new, it's fresh, and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Personally, I think it feels more at home on the tablet than it does on the desktop, because if you take a look, it definitely feels like it belongs on the tablet. And I think that was Microsoft's goal here. They're seeing Android and iOS in the tablet computer space really, really, really selling, and if I were Steve Ballmer, I'd be losing sleep right about now. So, essentially, my hope was that they would do something beyond improving the UI. I was hoping they would take the code and re revamp that as well, and they have. They are using HTML5 and JavaScript. Now, according to Chris Perillo, I believe that's supposed to be primarily on the user interface. I'm not exactly sure what the word is on materials that go deeper than that. But um, HTML5 and JavaScript are the technologies that's cur that currently power the web. Now, that's interesting because a lot of viruses are executed over the web. I'm really, really curious to see how Windows 8 is going to fare in terms of um, in terms of malware attacks and in terms of um, you know virus issues I think that at first and I stress at first because these malware creators are really clever unfortunately um, at first we may see a drop but then again, maybe not. I say this because I'm sure that somebody has managed to get a hold of the Windows 8 development project some way or another and is working to sabotage it. I can almost guarantee you. Well, actually, no, I can't. But we'll just have to wait and see is basically what I'm trying to get at here. It's going to be interesting. The user interface is one that I personally would like to check out especially since the rumor is, for those of you who are screen reader users, Microsoft is actually going to step up to the plate and do what Apple did with their Mac OS X and VoiceOver. They're actually going to include their very own screen reader. This is going to be something way beyond the capabilities of a narrator. This is going to make narrator look ancient, from what I understand. Um, the, again, this is only a rumor, but the rumor is they are actually going to the plate, up to stepping up at the plate and building their own screen reader. And how do I know this? Well, I managed to contact, managed to come into contact with somebody who was 
at the conference or somebody who knew somebody who was at the conference or listened to a recording. I don't know how they managed to get the information. In a nutshell, for those of you who do not know, the primary manufacturers of screen reading technology, commercial screen reading technology, which for those of you who do not know what that is, take what's on your screen and read it aloud to yourself. That's basically what a screen reader is. It takes what's on screen and reads it to the person who is blind who cannot see it and can also display it in Braille if they would like to do that through a refreshable Braille display. I, I can go into more detail on that, but that's not what this video is about. Suffice it to say, Microsoft is building this technology into Windows 8, and the reason I'm aware of this is because the recording, excuse me, at the technology conference, essentially, from what I understand it, Freedom Scientific is one of the manufacturers of this technology. They are not happy. Okay, they are not happy at all. They've ruled the market for so long, and they are now basically shaking in their boots that Microsoft is actually stepping up to the plate. The rumor is they actually tried to stop them the last time they tried to do this. But it looks to me like they're now uh, Microsoft is now able to go ahead and, and do it. This is huge! Because right now, the only computer that you are able to walk up to and get it to talk out of the box without any setup is a Macintosh. Linux has a screen reader with it in the, in the GNOME or GNOME, however you wish to pronounce it, environment, but it requires setup with the exception of one operating system called Vinux, V-I-N-U-X, but that one has been designed specifically for the blind. If you're talking about a more mainstream operating system like Ubuntu, you will need sighted assistance to set it up, at least to get into the terminal. Um, from there you can or, you can press, you can type in the ORCA command and get it going. Um, and the reason I say that is because um, it's a new interface, but that's besides the point. The Macintosh is the only computer that you can walk up to and get it to talk. Um, Microsoft is going to actually join them. This is huge because right now, Freedom Scientific's screen reading technology, $800 to $1,000. That's a lot of money for a lot of people that cannot afford it. And as a result, the burden is being placed on states, state agencies that, that work with people to get this equipment for them, either for school or for work. So Windows 8... I'm excited. At first, I looked at it and I thought, gee, it's just a copy of Windows 7, or Windows Phone 7, excuse me. And if you look at the two, they're practically the same thing, at least in the way the interface works. But if you dig, dig, you know, dig a little deeper, this is the very first complete overhaul of the operating system since 1995 in terms of the way it in, the, in terms of the way you interact with it. Again, I'm not exactly sure about under the hood changes beyond JavaScript and HTML5 powering the user interface. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. The other question that I'm really curious to get an answer to is how well is this going to defend itself against malware? We'll have to wait and see, but we, what do you guys think of Windows 8? I personally... Um, I might do what I did with Windows 7, and once a public beta becomes available, go ahead and download it, and either dual boot it on my Macintosh, or run it as a virtual machine if it'll be able to work that way without much compromise. The issue with running Windows 7 as a virtual machine is that Arrow had to be disabled, and without Arrow, I don't get my full screen magnification that I need. So, um, so yeah, what do you guys think of Windows 8? It'll be interesting to see what happens. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.